Hi, my name is Becky, and I'm a pretty good knitter. I learned how to knit back when I was 10, and I'm 27 at the time of filming this, so that's nearly two-thirds of my life. So I'm pretty curious as to whether I can knit without looking. I think it's actually possible, because most of the time when I knit, I'm watching the television, and when I'm watching the television, I'm looking more at the screen, and the knitting's just kind of there. But then about half the time when I'm actually watching television, I kind of stop paying attention to the television paying attention and start paying attention to my knitting instead. So I thought I'd put it to the test today. Um, I'm going to do it with a sleep mask. This is a sleep mask I use in order to uh, be well rested for my nocturnal job. Although I also found the old college standby. And I've got myself a ball of yarn, which is the most boring color but it's also the best color to use when you're trying new things. And I've also got a set of knitting needles that are plastic and they're pretty old, so I'm not gonna cry if they break on me, which has happened with its buddies that I've used when I've gripped too tightly. I'm not gonna cast on ahead of time. I'm gonna, because I think I can actually do that without looking at it. So we are going to see. So we're gonna put on the first mask. And we're going to put on the second mask. Just so you know, I can creep you guys out because that's fun. All right. So now it's time to find the end of my ball of yarn. Oh, found it. And it's time for a slip stitch. So I put it around. Now I could just do like the really easy cast on. I know I, I definitely know I can do that, but then it, I'm, I think I'm more likely to drop stitches that way. So I'm going to try the cable cast on. I'm going to try here. I think I'm going to go for 15 stitches. Nice even number. I'm going to try two different stitch types. I'm going to try the garter stitch, and then I'm also going to try the stockinette. All right. I think I got it here. And I've already lost count. <laughs> I often lose count when I'm doing things, which is why I don't like to count higher than 10. <laughs> Let's see here. Got that. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I got eight. Oh, you know how when you start something and then you think, oh, I should have done that? I should have gotten my yarn bowl so the ball won't run away. But if the ball escapes from me, that'll be another entertaining factor anyway. I think that's 10 and then 11. 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, let's double count. Let's double check to make sure I got 15. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, I actually do have 15. So I think it might be easier to knit than purl, despite the fact I find I found purling easier when I was younger. We'll see though. It's first stitch. Oh, that was really far down the needle. Oh, you, you hear the yarn squeaking? The yarn's not supposed to be that tight. Jeez. <laughs> but 
But then again, I also did it without doing the double stitch thing, so. So garter stitch is not the typical like V look um, that you typically associate with knitting as a stockinette. So when I spin the needles around, it's going to create like this bumpy ridge thing. All right, here's the last stitch. It's the hardest. There you go. <laughs> I was just thinking, like, should I salvage the edge or should I just go for it? I think I'm just going to go for it. I'm not going to bother with salvaging the edge. That's a little bit too much. Salvaging the edge means when you skip the first thing just to create, like, this loop. But I'm not going to sew this to anything. Oh. Uh-oh. Wait. No, not uh-oh. Okay. I thought I was knitting with, like, the yarn tail which I would have found out about that really quickly because it'd be like, where did the yarn go? <laughs> yeah, it's the second row. I think we'll try like 10 rows. So it's like nice enough that I can actually see my progress and, but not so long that I'm gonna lose count. <laughs> it's very hard to keep track above 10, which is why the metric system makes so much more sense. Oh. All right, these will be easy to remember which ones are the even rows because I'll keep dealing with the yarn tail there. Oh man, I lost count again. <laughs> can I, wait, can I actually count based on how many ridges there are? So, it's like one ridge, two, three, four, five, six, okay. <laughs> Oh, 
think I almost put the needle through the wrong spot. Put it back through there, okay. Wait, where'd the ball of yarn go? Oh, okay. As long as it didn't go off the table, you know? That would have been a real mess. Especially since there was paper in that direction. <laughs> I just cleaned the studio. I don't want the paper going everywhere. very strange to be knitting and just like solely focusing on the knitting you know because knitting's like in a company with something else type of activity like there's also talking uh with my knitting group on Tuesdays as well as the uh watching tv it's it's not really something I do alone by itself so much anymore unless the pattern's really really difficult All right, I think I'm getting to the point where I'm gonna switch this stockinette stitch. So means I'm gonna try purling the next row. When I first learned how to knit, I remember doing the stitch and the person teaching me went like, no, no, that's not how you do it and took it out, but I didn't see what happened and I got the desired effect. So I spent like, at least three years, if not more than that, believing I was, I couldn't do purl when in fact I was purling the entire time and I actually hadn't figured out the knit stitch. So now we're purling. Wait. I should probably remember which side I started the purling on, what side the yarn tail is on. Aha, yarn tail is on my right side. Okay. So otherwise I might have an unintentional switch if I lose track again. can actually feel the difference between the two stitches, which is nice. Wait, that didn't feel right there. Yeah, that felt better. Where's the yarn tail? There's the yarn tail. Oh wait, no, the yarn. Oh, I forgot the name for that. It's just the feeder yarn, right? 
It's like the it's like the thing you get so used to seeing the name just disappears. I think the next are I'm going to attempt to bind off. So this one, I'm going to have to be careful that I don't drop any stitches in the process. Do that. All right, I think I'm getting it now. And we're at the end here. I can feel it. All right. Just one needle down. To reach for a pair of scissors around here. Here we go. Make sure I don't cut myself in the process. There we go. Let's see how I did. Oh man, that's right. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Need, need to give my eyes a chance to adjust here. All right. Oh. It's not bad. Oh, that's a weird bump there. I don't, I don't know if you can see it. There's like, I don't know what I did there. <laughs> uh, that's the only mistake though. Yeah. Here we have a little piece of useless nothing. <laughs> but uh, there you have it. A piece of knitting done without looking at it whatsoever. I, I don't know what knowledge this gives you, but we'll see. <laughs> I actually have a lot of anxiety when it comes to filming myself on camera. So if anyone other than me is seeing this, then congratulations to me because it means I gave my anxiety a big, huge screw you, which is a win in my book. <laughs>